Thank you so much for joining my podcast series, Formidable Females in Future Flight. I'm meeting exceptional women from across the aerospace sector um, in order to help inspire more women to choose this sector for their own careers. I'm really delighted to be um, joined today by Tosha Perkins. She's Chief People Officer with Archer Aviation, which is one of the world's leading air taxi pioneers. And Tosha, thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about this opportunity. Oh, brilliant. And just in case anybody doesn't know the business, could you tell me a little bit about Archer? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, Archer is an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft company, which basically means that we are building a product that can serve as an air taxi um, in congested mm -hmm. cities. So our primary market is looking at replacing um, or offering another form of transportation in congested cities. I'm sure all of you have experienced sitting in uh, a two hour traffic experience for something that was only 20 miles away. So mm -hmm. our intention is to offer another route of transportation in a sustainable fashion. So by building an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, we're able to offer that as an air taxi service. Fantastic. Um, sounds like something that we, we will all need. Um, but I don't think you've always worked in this sector. Could you tell me a little bit about your career? How did your career begin? Yeah, absolutely. So I initially thought that I wanted to be a clinical psychologist. And mm -hmm. so I pursued an internship. I, I got my degree in psychology. Um, I always had a scientific uh, side to my interest. And so I actually had a, a minor in mathematics. Uh, so I, I went into clinical, clinical psychology and actually got an internship at a behavioral center where there was pr some pretty severe psychological disorders, such as schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder. And through that experience, one of the things that I kept questioning was the leadership team and the organization within the mental health institution itself and how some of the decisions at the higher level were impacting the patients and the progress and the facility. And so through that experience, I had a very wise mentor who said, perhaps you would be interested in industrial organizational psychology, which is ultimately uh, human behavior within the workplace. And how do you increase productivity, leadership skills, et cetera, through human behavior? And mm -hmm. so that is essentially how I got into it. I ended up getting my PhD in industrial organizational psychology and went into the consulting field primarily because behavior is complex and mm -hmm. can feel unpredictable. So being able to see it across multiple situations and context and organizations, um, I felt like would give me a much better experience and basis to do my job more properly. So I, I initially went into the consulting industry. Fantastic. And as your career has progressed, do you think that being female has influenced any of the decisions that you've made along the way? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's, it's impacted and influenced every decision that I've made along the way. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, when I look back on my career, there, there's always been a tension inside, an internal, inten an internal tension um, of wanting to do really well in my career and being really passionate about my career. But also when I became a mom, and you know, wanting to be a really good mom and wanting to be able to have time with my kids, there, were, there was this natural tension that existed. And I had to make a lot of decisions around um, you know, how I would personally find what that balance looked like for me. And I can you know, look back and, and several decisions, one of them moving from the West Coast to Houston so that I was closer to family that could help me as a working mom. Um, there was also a, a, a six-year stint where my husband and I moved several times so that I could physically be closer to the kids from a driving distance perspective to be able to attend certain events as they were getting older, et cetera. So it's certainly been something that has influenced almost every decision along the way on the personal side as I navigated my career. Um, also, mm -hmm. you know, when I moved to Houston, uh, naturally, the oil and gas industry is a big industry there. And so I found a lot of my clients were oil and gas clients. And then I ultimately ended up joining one of those clients um, to be, be in, in the company. And that was very eye-opening as a female uh, in, 
my career and an influence and influential. Um, I was lucky to have come from a family where my parents said, you know, you could be anything, you can do anything. And so I always had that mindset. And then going into oil and gas and, you know, going to construction sites where there wasn't female restrooms and there wasn't, um, you know, basic things to accommodate females being in the workplace was was incredibly eye-opening to me. And that sort of set my journey in terms of, you know, how, how passionate I was about ensuring that we could progress as women within organizations. So certainly that was eye-opening to me of how influential um, being a female was even within the industry and my purpose and what I had to push for. Brilliant. So from there, what is it that brought you to the future of aviation? Yeah, absolutely. So I spent about eight years in the oil and gas slash energy industry. And through that, I gained a lot of really incredible experience, particularly on the global landscape and also within highly regulated complex uh, environments, including you know safety being the number one priority. And mm -hmm. as I look to, when my husband and I look to come back to the West Coast, and obviously my intention was to, I, I consider myself a very progressive person that likes to push new ideas, creativity. Silicon Valley is a great place to do that. Um, but one of the challenges I was faced with was just, you know, maybe moving into a software company didn't necessarily utilize all of the experiences and skill sets that I had gained over the years within um, a highly regulated industry. So when Archer came up, it was fascinating for me for multiple reasons. One, it allowed me to utilize all of this experience that I had had previously because it is very highly regulated, complex, a lot of government affairs, um, all of those different same, similar aspects as you experience in the energy industry. Mm -hmm. um, but it also had the technology side of advancing and changing the industry of transportation, which was mm -hmm. really at my more progressive, exciting, passionate side. Um, and then interesting fun fact is my father actually retired as the head of HR for a aerospace manufacturing company. And oh. my brother was in the Air Force and he works for GE Aviation. So there was there's actually a ton of aviation in, in my family. So it was really just all the different aspects of Archer um, ticked all the right boxes for me and, and my fascination with aviation. Brilliant. It sounds like a, a lot of things came, came together in a, a really nice way for you when you made that decision. And I've observed that this is certainly a sector where there are more males than females. And I wondered, how do you feel as a, a female in the leadership team of this business? Yeah. So I am the only female currently on our executive leadership team. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. that has, I think it can have its disadvantages. The way that I would describe it is I'm incredibly grateful to see and excited to see all of the progress that's happened. You know, as I mentioned, I, when I started my career as a young female, I was experiencing these very basic challenges like, you know, uh, having locks on restrooms and female restrooms on construction sites to fast mm -hmm. forward to some of my later years being in Saudi Arabia and convincing the deans of some of the colleges to accept women into the university, which they now do. And women are part of offshore um, vessels. So, you know, the, the transformation that I was able to see and be a part of was incredible. So to be where I am today feels incredible and exciting. Um, I also feel at some sometimes that there's disadvantages of, you know, we still mm -hmm. have so much more progress we need to make. Um, as one of the only females on the leadership team, sometimes it can be challenging to continue trying to push this progress when you're the only voice in the room mm -hmm. that, is, that is the female voice. Um, so I'm certainly pushing and excited to get more executive female leaders in the, avi in the aviation industry specifically, and certainly mm -hmm. at Archer. And, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's mixed emotions, you know, we've, we've mm -hmm. come so far, but yet we still have so much further to go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that you need to be a certain type of woman in order to succeed in male dominated spaces? No, I do not think that mm -hmm. you need to be a certain type of woman. Mm -hmm. What I, you know, I've, I, I've thought a lot about this, um, because, there have been times, obviously, in my journey where being in such a male-dominated environment, I've questioned whether this would 
help my career if I, mm -hmm. if I tried to um, be a certain type of a female or change myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I purposely made the decision that that's not something that I'm willing to do because I don't think it's necessary. I think what is necessary is being very intentional and purposeful to focus on skills and characteristics that would make you successful in any environment, but maybe more um, help you more in a male dominated environment. So as an example of that, confidence is an obvious one and being mm -hmm. true to yourself. Um, so, you know, there will definitely be times where you would question yourself through the journey. Am I not being included in this because I'm the only woman? Am I, you know, you'll question and being confident to speak up and ask, you know, do you think I'd add value by being in that meeting or I'd like to be in that meeting? Please include me in that meeting. Being confident enough to ask those questions. Those are definitely skills that would make you successful anywhere, but certainly mm -hmm. you to be very purposeful and intentional in a heavily male dominated environment, um, along with others like being assertive and, but also, you know, as I mentioned, just really being true to who you are and continuing to reflect on uh, who you are and who you want to be and the value that you bring, regardless of what you look like or, or any of those aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. That is such good advice. And um, I know that it, it's quite easy sometimes to feel a little bit intimidated if, if you're the only one. Um, but actually, that's something to be really proud of and to celebrate. And certainly, um, my, my real mission in making this podcast series is to celebrate um, incredible and inspiring females like you to to try to encourage more um, that we're looking for. So thank you for that input. Thank you. Um, I wondered, uh, are you glad? Would you say that you're glad you made this career move? What are your favorite things about this job? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm not only excited, but I was actually mm -hmm. thinking and reflecting this morning that this might be my most exciting journey, mm -hmm. or I should say. Um, I'm very happy, as I mentioned, I think, you know, the industry itself is is changing our world. And so mm -hmm. just just the the industry and company itself is exciting. Uh, but there's all these other aspects that you and I are discussing, which is, you know, how can I be more influential in helping the aviation industry um, promote and develop more female leaders and executives and um, create more diverse Culture. So I'm, I'm just as passionate about the opportunity to continue to do that. So I would mm -hmm. say, yes, absolutely, hands down, would not have mm -hmm. changed my decision at this point. <laughs> Great. And what would you say to any other women, if there are others who are thinking about making a, tran a transition in their career um, and maybe thinking about this sector, what would you say to them? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I think, well, I would say join, the short answer. Mm -hmm. But what comes to mind when you ask that question, I, I remember getting this advice at one point, and I've heard other people say, you know, look at the leadership team, and if it's all men, uh, that might give you an indication, so maybe you shouldn't apply. I would say scrap that advice entirely. You know, I think, um, I think to your point, I think being mm -hmm. the only woman, wow, what a powerful position and purpose and situation um, that is for you to help other women. So, I, you know, mm -hmm. I would say and to help the organization and to help other women. So I would say, you know, look for those type of opportunities to, to help transform companies the way they're thinking about things, to help pull other women up through the organization. Um, what an incredible, powerful opportunity that would be. So I would say, yes, please come, please join. We are doing big things. Um, and be part of being, adding that type of value in your life and being able to say that you left that type of legacy. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, it certainly sounds like a very exciting opportunity to come and help change the world. Um, I've been reading a lot about you lately, and I, I know that Archer has unveiled its aircraft and announced its manufacturing facility. Um, so congratulations on all of that news. It sounds really exciting and very best of luck to you with your next steps thank you thank for joining me thank you so much joe